In this video, I'll show you how to create explosions and implosions using the Kaboom API script. Now, quick disclaimer, because we're using the Roll20 API, this does require you to have a pro account. All right, let's get started. The Kaboom script is part of the Roll20 API script library, so you can easily install it into your game, and once it's loaded, you can make things go kaboom. So let's set my goblins back here next to my wizard, and I want to start out by having my wizard forcefully throw the goblins back. Wizard has like a fire spell that he's going to use to throw the goblins away from him. So to do that, we're going to type in the following. It's going to be kaboom, and then the distance that we want to throw the goblins. So we're going to say we're going to push them back 10 feet. Kaboom. Now I have noticed sometimes there is a bit of a lag with the special effects with the fire and whatnot in Roll20, but as you can see, the script did throw the goblins back. There we go, the burst was just a little bit late. Alright, so that has thrown our goblins back a total of 10 feet. So let's reset them real quick here. The first question that you may be asking is, okay, well, how much range does that kaboom burst have? Because all we did was say how far we wanted to throw them. How do we know what creatures we're going to affect? Well, there is a way to provide the radius that you want to use as an argument to Kaboom. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But there is a default distance specified. And basically what the default distance is, is the amount of units you want to move times a particular setting in the script. So let me just jump back to my games settings page here. And if we go into our API script and we go into Kaboom, at the bottom of Kaboom, there is this explosion ratio. So if you don't specify a radius for the explosion, what's going to happen here is we're going to take the distance that you're throwing things, so 10 feet, multiply it by the explosion ratio, and that's the total radius that you're going to affect things. So things that are within a 20 foot radius of my wizard will be affected by this kaboom here. So let's do that. So I'm going to say kaboom. You can see they get thrown back. Okay, so now if we measure from the center point here, this goblin is currently 15 feet away. This goblin is currently 15 feet away. If I run kaboom again, again, just the 10 foot here, and you need to make sure you keep your uh, creature selected when you want a kaboom. Otherwise, you get that error message right there. Okay, there's another kaboom. You see, I pushed them a little further away. I've pushed them to the edge of the radius. So now they are 20 feet away and they will no longer be impacted by this kaboom. If I select them again, you see, they didn't get moved. All right, so now let me show you how to manually set that radius. So let's move this goblin back here. All right, and I'm going to leave this one out here at the 20 foot mark. So I'm going to say kaboom again, 10 feet. And I'm going to change it to be a 30 foot radius. So I'm going to actually specify 30 feet here. So we're going to affect creatures that are 30 feet away from my wizard. So I've got my wizard selected. I'm going to kaboom. And you saw that I affected the goblin that was 20 feet away. If I bring out another goblin here, just like copy him and paste him up here. All right. He is farther away than 30 feet. So if I run this command again, you see he's not affected. Okay, so we've got a good handle on explosive force and distance, but now let's jazz it up a little bit. So you can add visual effects to your explosions. You know, you have your kaboom command here, and I'm just going to type in dash dash magic. And what that's going to do is change the burst effect that you saw coming out from the wizard. So instead of it being fire, we're going to get the magic effect. So... There we go. You can actually change the color of that to any one of the types listed here in the effects. So you can have it be fire, you can have it be holy, you can have it be magic or frost, you know, whatever type of effect you want to go for. Now, as you can see, the tokens affected by the explosion were pushed back exactly 10 feet. So each token winds up 
in the center of the square 10 feet from where they started. And when I'm running combat, that's exactly what I want to have. I want to keep the tokens in the center of the squares. That just makes it easy for me to measure distance when I go to move or for my players to measure distance when they go to move. But if you want to introduce a little more randomness to your explosions, you don't want things to move exactly 10 feet or you know, maybe you want them to move 9 feet or 11 feet. You know, you want it to move 10-ish feet then you can use what's called the scattering flag. So I'm going to come back into my line here. I'm going to type in dash dash scattering on. And what this is going to do now is when the creatures get thrown back, they won't be thrown back exactly 10 feet. So let's set this. I'll select my wizard scattering on. There we go. And you notice now that the creatures didn't land in the exact centers of their respective squares. This guy's been knocked a little bit farther. This guy's a little bit closer to the edge as well. So that scattering effect will allow you to randomize your explosions a little bit, make them a little less clean. And so if you're exploding, say, in a shop full of items that you've got tokens for, that scattering effect is going to be really nice because it will make things a little bit more haphazard in the explosion. Um, but personally, for dealing with combat type tokens, I like to leave it off because then you keep things, you know, easy to, to measure for distance. And if you want to turn scattering off, it's a simple matter of just changing it to off. And there we go. Now, we can also set what size of objects will be affected by the explosion. So up to this point, our wizard has been dealing with these two little goblins. So this minotaur has come down, and my wizard's going to use his, you know, repulsion effect. So there we go. So he's knocked back the minotaur. But maybe we don't want him to be able to knock back the Minotaur. Maybe we want to limit how big of an object the explosion is going to affect. Because, you know, in the real world, bigger things are harder to move. So maybe we want the Minotaur to not be affected by this burst. Maybe it's not strong enough. Maybe if, we, maybe if we've got the wizard all queued up like this, we only want the creatures that are one square in size to be affected. And anything that's two squares or bigger we don't want it to impact. So what we'll say here is our command, and we're going to do dash dash max dash size. And I'm going to set that to two. And when I do that, you notice we're going to get a message here saying that all objects larger than two squares are now considered too heavy to move. So if I run this again, right, with my magic, we see that the minotaur stayed. You know, the wizard threw back the goblins, but the minotaur was unaffected by the blast. Okay, so now let's reverse this. All right, we've been talking about explosions. Let's talk now about implosions. So an implosion is going to draw things closer to the highlighted token, right? Up to this point, we've been throwing things away from that token. Now we want to pull things closer. So I'm going to set my goblins back here. And the command is nearly identical. The only difference here is we make that throw number negative. And so now if I do this... You see, we pulled the goblins closer together. So this is really handy because if you want to make like a gravity spell or if you've got a whirlpool that your players are trying to swim out of and they get, you know, gradually sucked closer to the center of the whirlpool, you know, this is a really neat way to do that. You just make that first number negative and then the tokens will be drawn towards that point. Now, there are a handful of other settings that we can talk about here. Um, for example, you can have Kaboom only affect drawings. So if you don't want to deal with your player's tokens or your monster's tokens being thrown around, you can have it just affect drawings. The layer that you're going to affect can either be the objects layer or the map. And again, this might be nice if you want to just impact things on the map layer, have those get blown around and you know leave your player's tokens and things on the objects layer intact. Uh, dynamic lighting stops movement. So if you don't have this setting enabled and you are using dynamic lighting, then it is possible for your tokens to get blown through walls. And maybe you want to do that. Maybe you, it's a very violent explosion and you want somebody to get blown out of the house and into the street, then turn this off. But if you're maybe in a dungeon and the walls are all stone and you're not using that powerful of an explosive, you probably want to leave this on. 
Uh, the explosion ratio, like we talked about earlier, is kind of the default multiplier for the radius that you're going to get. And then you can also set this so that only GMs can use the Kaboom script. Now, one other thing to mention here is that you can also make calls to Kaboom in your own API scripts. There's actually a Kaboom object that the script gives you. And you've seen me make calls to other API scripts before, but that's when I've been calling them via the send chat command. But Kaboom gives you your own Kaboom command that you can incorporate into your API scripts. I'm not going to go into that right now. I may do it in a future video, but I did want to mention this because I thought that was really nice and I kind of wish that uh, more of the API scripts would expose things and provide documentation like this. But there you go. Kaboom is really easy to use and it adds some really fun explosive effects to your game. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.